You must have seen the image of Dawn Nisbet over the weekend. This is the uh, woman who has finished a local park run. It was a local 5K. And the photograph that's gone viral over the weekend is of her joyously making it over the finish line with one of the marshals behind her because she finishes a good 10 minutes or so after the rest of the runners. So she has to be accompanied by a marshal. And her arms are aloft and the look of joy on her face. Uh, We'll speak to Dawn at 10.55 about her newfound fame from the park runs. So finishing last, uh, perhaps not always celebrated, but for Dawn Nisbet, it's led to her photograph being shared thousands and thousands of times on social media over the weekend. Uh, She was taking part in a 5K park run. It wasn't actually her first. And the photo of her crossing the finish line, arms aloft, has been taken as an inspiration to many. And uh, in fact, uh, Dawn has come to see us now, which is great. And a little bit earlier, just for a bit of fun, we recreated the photo, didn't we? So if you want to see this... Uh, then you can find it on my Twitter page. I think the Five Live Twitter have retweeted it as well. Um, so look, first of all, welcome to the program. Thank you. Just give that microphone a, a grab towards you, really. So it's a bit clear. There we go. Don't be shy of it. Brilliant. Now we can hear you. And um, why is this? Why have you become a social media phenomenon? Because it, it wasn't your first park run, was it? I, th- I think it's like you say that the picture just shows my joy and my sense of achievement as I cross the finish line. And that seems to have touched lots and lots of people's hearts when they look at it. When I looked at it, I told you earlier, I saw a very sweaty, um, very tired person crossing the finish line after 5k. But nobody else sees that when they see it, they see that smile and that joy. So gradually I'm getting used to seeing that. So, right. so you don't mind seeing your photo now? Not as much as I did when I first saw it. So. What was your first thought when you first saw it? How embarrassing. Why? Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big girl. There's lots of jiggly bits in that picture. But uh, as I say, just the sense of achievement, that, that picture captured what, what I set out to do. And I, I did that. But you've got jiggly with it. <laughs> I have. <laughs> <laughs> How much after the, the pack then do you come in on this 5K? Last. Yeah, but I, I mean, what's the time gap? Uh, probably about 10 minutes. Right. So not, um, not loads. It's not like they're waiting hours for you. No. But um, on Saturday, um, when I ran on Saturday, it was minus one. So I feel sorry. The marshals stand um, and make sure that nobody's left out. The, the race doesn't shut until the last person crosses the line. So right. I always feel a bit guilty. They're probably that bit colder having to wait for me to cross the line. So You've mentioned your physique to us already in the interview. Yeah. So how long have you been running for? And was that a factor in you not starting earlier? Definitely. Um, I've I'd probably been inactive for about 17 years, if I'm honest. I'd done the odd flurry into trying the gym and various things like that. Um, but I started training for the Pretty Muddy Race for Life in April last year. So it's since then. Um, so and the period of inactivity, any reason for that? I just think that catch 22, that the, the less you do, the harder it becomes. And then you don't start doing anything. You've got the self-limiting beliefs that, well, I can't do it, so I won't do it. And that just festers inside and becomes this this big blocker for you ever trying anything different. And it affects your self-confidence, all of that. So I've, I've had that for quite a while. So if this is resonating with someone listening to you tonight, what, what's the advice? How do you just get going? Stop letting what other people think of you stop what you want to do and what you want to be. Take ownership for what you want to achieve. Shut your ears and shut your eyes if people are saying negative things to you. And have they? Uh, I had a Mars bar thrown at me when I was running once. Um, But no, the messages in response to that picture um, spur me on that very very few people have the time or the effort to to think bad things. Yeah. Did you pick the Mars bar up and save it for the end? I did think it was a very rude waste of chocolate, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Because the um, the interesting thing is, from what you said earlier in the interview, is it, I mean, obviously in that case, that's just bad behaviour, but yeah. is it what other people are thinking about you? Or is it what you think other people are thinking about you? Because you told me before we came on the radio that you what you saw in that photo was was a purple face and, and yeah. wobbly bits was your phrase, <laughs> right? But all the first thing I saw, genuinely, the first thing I saw was this sheer joy on your face, as if you'd broken a world record. Yeah, I think it is what you think other people are thinking and very few people are actually thinking that. They're thinking, wow, look at her do that. It's obviously going to be that bit more difficult for her because she, she's not an elite athlete, she's not super super slim but there she is going out doing it and owning it and look at the joy that that she gets from it 
Uh, I was explaining to Dawn that there's uh, we've had on the program Alexandra Heminsley, who's written a book called Running for Girls. And if you a woman who wants to start running, it's a good starting point. Really, it talks about making sure you get a proper bra, where you can get that from, <laughs> yeah. where you get your running shoes from. You know how much you need to spend on running shoes because you don't need to go crazy, do you? No, I've I've not bought anything new. I had the trainers already; they just were used for walking round as opposed to running round. Uh, Crystal joins us in London because you've inspired us tonight to ask for people's proudest moments. Crystal, oh. what's your proudest moment? Oh, mine, I've got to say, hi, Dawn as well, and hi, hi. Phil. Um, I've got to say, Dawn, everything that you said I totally agree with is just don't listen to other people because my proudest moment was when I was, God, I can't have been more than about six or seven years old. Um, primary school, every single sports day, I would come last. Didn't understand why because everyone just, treated me the same but people would be looking and going oh she's going to come last and it was because I had some mobility problems as a kid I had some brain surgery so I was never going to win a race um and one year my teachers saw how upset I got and it got to the end of sports day and they called me up and they had had a certificate made especially just for me for Christopher walk and for good effort oh and wow it made me so proud and it hung on my wall for years in my bedroom it's still some 30 odd years later I'm still really proud brilliant, oh, brilliant. <laughs> Crystal thanks for taking the time to give us a ring your proudest moment to 850580 at BBC Five Live. You're going to keep going there? Yeah, definitely. Uh, my worry is if I stop, my life will be how it was before. I love my life that I had, but I want it to be better and I want to be healthier. I've got children. I need to be healthier for them and me. So what's next, 10K? Oh, steady on. <laughs> a few more fives to start with, I think. Rome wasn't built in a day, but then again, you weren't on that job. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dawn Nisbet, for coming to speak to us. Dawn's image shared by thousands over the weekend. Arms aloft on the finish line of the 5K Park Run. 